Now I don't know why I'm saying welcome back to RD Works Learning Lab because today there is going to be no RD Works Learning Lab involved. Um, I think as you can probably see here we're going to be doing a bit of machining work before we jump onto the the actual laser machine itself. Now what I'm holding here is something I've just purchased from Maplin and it is a little laser pointing key ring. Now I'm intending to use this to help set my mirrors up because I'm absolutely fed up with running around the front and the back of the machine pressing the pulse button and you know it, it's an irksome job. If I could get a continuous point of light like a small laser pointer fired at the mirrors then it would make life so much easier because I could make continuous adjustments and not little step adjustments. Although this is really slim and it fits into the hole in the end of the laser um, which is where I'm tending to plug it it's a little bit small in terms of diameter and it's far too long to get in there so what I'm going to do now is to carry out some modifications and adaptions I have no fear of doing things like this um, and we're going to see if we can make it work and uh, make some bits and pieces that will allow me to adjust the collimation of this so that it's perfectly lined up because at the moment the actual laser when I tested it is the beam is well out of line with the axis of the body. So the first thing I'm going to do is just see what's inside this unit by turning the front cap off. Now I know that this front cap is brass and will turn very easily. Well, that's good news because I've broken the glue which is great. I half suspected it was glued in. Now we can have a look inside. Oh, there we go, that's nice. don't know what sort of glue that would be but I suspect that if you heated this up with a with a heat gun um, you would probably be able to just take it out because the glue would go soft. I'm half suspecting that I should be able to remove this piece as well and what I should be left with is the actual laser head. So that's, this, must be the, this must be the positive from the batteries and this must be the negative. So here we've got a piece of uh, white Delrin material. It's a lovely material to work with. It's a very hard engineering plastic. And my little toy lathe here. We should be able to do something with it. Just face it up. I'm going to try that because I think that's probably going to be just about a good fit. Okay, well, eight millimeters, that's a perfect fit in there. Just the merest amount of slot, which is good, and it goes in just deep enough. This is a slightly dull 6.5 drill. I reckon this might do the job. So we shall just take that out the chuck and give that a try from the other end. So yes, now with a bit of luck Oh, look at that. That's perfect. There's virtually no slop in there. That's good. So that means when I drop it in from the back... ...should be a nice slide fit in there. Now we come to a slightly tricky bit. We've got to get a hole through from the inside of this slot to the front face so that we can get a wire to get a hole through at an angle into the back there. Now I'm trying to use the original battery pack if I can. 
and to do that what I'm going to do is put a contact in the end which happens to be an, an M4 countersunk screw which is about 10 millimeters long. I'm now going to drill a hole through the middle for my wire to connect to. Right, we're going to have a couple of bits of wire, one red, one black, obviously for positive and negative, and uh, <clears throat> we'll make them nice and long so that we've got plenty of scope for putting the battery pack wherever we want. That's got that nicely on there. That's just what we want. I'm just going to pile the batteries up there. So we're putting this through here and we're making that the bottom contact, the positive contact. Now I'm going to put the case over the batteries because they're difficult to get in otherwise. And there we go. Right, well now that we've made good contact with that, we should be able to press the button here and see where we get light. Yeah, we get light when we touch the body. So the longest path length to the lens is about 1100 millimeters. With the wires coming out the casing at the top, the beam is actually touching here. Nowhere near the target. And if I turn it through 90 degrees, just about makes the bottom of the target. Then I turn it through another 90 degrees and as you can see it's at the top of the target. I turn it another 90 degrees and it comes back down towards the bottom of the target again. So it's quite a long way out and that's only eight or nine hundred millimeters. First of all I shall have to increase the size of this center bore so that I can actually move the um, move the LED to steer it and then I should have to steer it with some grub screws through the outside of this diameter here which is one of the reasons why I left this diameter so large so that I could actually put some grub screws through there if I needed to. Although my plan was to drive this with its existing battery pack to be honest it was becoming too much hassle and so consequently I decided I would just use a standard mains driven um, 5 volt DC regulated power supply to drive this thing. Now it's half a volt over what the uh, three batteries would have been at one and a half volts but it doesn't seem to have had any effect at all. But the only thing I must point out to you is I stupidly forgot that the back face of the battery is in fact the positive and not the negative. And so consequently when I connected my wires up I've connected them all up the wrong way round for colours. So when you connect up to the power supply you need to make sure that you connect your black wire to what would be the positive feed and the red wire to what would be the outer case negative feed. But apart from that everything works perfectly. So here we are with the final version of my little targeting laser. Um, what I've done I've increased the size of this central bore here to about eight millimeters diameter. Now that's giving me lots of clearance around the outside of the brass laser head. And then what I've done in four positions around the outside here, I have put what I call steering screws. So now what we've got to do is we've got to get the light lined up with the axis of this white Delrin spool. Currently I've got all the screws loose. So what I'm going to do first of all is to tighten up the front set of screws on here to make the middle approximately in the center of the hole. Okay so give or take a little bit we've got the front screws holding the front of the laser head in place in the center of the axis. So now what I'm going to do is use the, just the rear screws here to steer the beam. Turn the beam on and we'll have a look at where it is and then we'll rotate it 180 degrees and check where it is and it is low. Now that means that I can therefore raise this up by screwing down on the screw that's at the top 
So if I wind this screw down, when it touches the body, you'll see, there we go, it's starting to come up now. Now what I've got to do is find a central position. Now I'm hopeful that if this worktop is flat, then when I turn it over, my beam will be in approximately the same position. It's a little bit on the high side, so maybe this surface is not completely flat. I mean, it's not designed as an optical table. It's just a plastic worktop. So what we'll do, we'll try and find a halfway position between there and, let's wind that up just a shade more, there, and see whether or not that matches this position here, which it does approximately. So now we'll move on to the 90 degree position and we'll try and set that up and we'll come back and tweak the other one in a minute. So that again doesn't look too far out, a little bit high. So if we turn this through 180 degrees and check this, this should be a little bit low. So we wind the screw down to make the beam come up. And here we go. And we put that just above the line as well. And now we'll check it for 180 degrees again. And that's not far out. So we're going to ro rotate this round the clock now. So there's zero. There's 90. There's 180. And there's 270. So I do believe that that beam is now lined up with the axis of the plastic spool. 